Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So today I'm going to be doing an art journal page and this is one of those, I think it's a Dilusions journal, it's a small size. I actually started this in 2017, did a few pages in it and it's been packed away since then. So I thought I'm going to get this one out today and start to fill up some of the pages. So just using some music sheets there to protect the pages underneath. And what I'm going to do is to take, those are tea dyed book pages, they have some washi tape and also a couple of pieces of origami paper, I think some little bits of music paper as well. And I'm just going to glue these down with fluid matte medium. Now I have put this video on double speed because there was almost I think about an hour and 15 minutes of footage so I thought that would make it quite a long video and if you've watched me before you've maybe heard me say I do work quite slowly so I think even at double speed you should be able to see all that I'm doing and I'm going to talk you through it anyway. I did like that piece of paper, usually I try and take any straight lines off but obviously when it's ripped out the book it's lifted pieces from the other page so I thought I like that, I'm just going to put that down. So today I'm working on the prompt for the Art and Soul Studio Facebook group, uh, their, yeah it's our November prompt had to think about what month it was. So it's a no November prompt and my co-host Diana from the channel Artfully Yours with Diana, I'll leave her links below. Diana and I had our usual discussion around what would we make the prompt for this month and we decided we would make it whimsical. So whimsical can mean a lot of different things, uh, you know, in terms of style I've seen various things classed as, as whimsical and I think it's down to each individual artist to decide what, what they think of as, as whimsy and I sometimes think that the work that I've done in the past isn't whimsical but then I look back at it and I think it probably is. So. What I decided to do today was, I've seen a lot of kind of pages in the past that are very sort of simplified faces, almost naive type approach to them and I've never been very good at them. I've certainly tried them before but I think I end up trying to put in too much detail and I lose that kind of innocent naive look that they have. So I thought today I'm going to give that a go. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You know, this is just a page in a journal that if I don't like it, I can go over it with gesso or whatever. So I will talk you through what I'm doing and, uh, you know, how I achieve that kind of finished look, which I do believe looking back now since I've already completed it, is quite whimsical in nature. So sticking down my book pages, the pieces of origami paper, little bits of music paper and just some pieces of uh, washi tape now. And I do also use some of the fluid matte medium with the washi tape because often it's not terribly sticky and it does have a tendency to lift. Now I didn't smooth all the book pages down terribly well, there was little bubbles in it but you know I wasn't too concerned about that, it would just add texture. So what I am doing now is I'm just taking some clear gesso and I'm just going to go over the page and that's going to give me a nice surface to work on. It will give me a bit of tooth because I'm not entirely certain where I'm going next. These pages in this particular type of journal you can work directly onto but with some materials I just like that little bit of tooth. The clear gesso tends to have more tooth than the white gesso but I also at this stage didn't want to actually lose all the background with the white gesso. Although you will see that as I go on that a lot of that background does actually disappear. Now sometimes people will say to me oh you know you put all that into the background but a lot of it's covered up why do you do that? Well, for me, oh, I'll hold that thought just now. This is just a piece of 
an old bath mat. You know, it's one of those mats that you can have in your bath or your shower and stops you from slipping. And I had changed one out and uh, kept that. So it just gives this nice little print. The ink pad is a stays on black. It's just about out of ink, but I'm actually quite happy with the way that's coming. I didn't want it too dark anyway, so it's just giving a bit of a kind of grey charcoal type of colour, which is perfectly fine. So, yeah, some people will say, why do you cover all that background up? And what I often try to do is to leave bits of it showing. And if I could give an example of what I think it compares to, it's like uh, cooking something from scratch when you're using lots of ingredients. You know, you might combine various herbs and spices and different vegetables and sometimes at the end of it when you make the dish you might say oh yeah you know if you put chili peppers in then you're maybe going to taste a bit of the chili but a lot of the other ingredients you won't necessarily taste but it's a combination of them that gives you that kind of finished dish and for me that's what mixed media is about it's about that combination sometimes things will still kind of jump out a little bit, but other things will be more blended into that kind of background flavour. All in all, it gives a good taste. And, you know, the thing is, it's there, it's underneath, it's adding texture, it's adding interest. And sometimes, for me, it's just about, it's a way to actually start a page. Today I was very much about a mixed media page, but I have seen me start a page in this way and you see absolutely nothing in the background. But it leads me along that path to that finished piece. So here I am just taking lots of different colours and, uh, you know, I had a mint green, a uh, periwinkle blue, that canary yellow and I think in a moment I will also introduce turquoise and all I'm doing is applying it with my fingers really into the gaps mainly but also starting to cover up some of those papers and the washi that was sitting in the background so that helps them start to to blend in. For me really the interest in, in mixed media is, is not just combining the different types of materials and media. It's also being able to look through and see what's in the layers below. As I say, you can't always see some of what's underneath, but just those little peaks of things coming through, for me, just adds a lot of interest. So, just trying to finish that off and then I'll give it a good dry. So, you can see there that some of that first layer of the collage is quite well covered in places but you can still see it coming through. So now I'm just taking this white paint and today it's all kind of craft paints that I'm using. Uh, so I'm taking the white paint and what I'll do with this is again I'll just use my finger and I start to paint with my finger just a kind of rough shape of the figure that I want to create. So this is the head and I'm thinking to things that I've seen previously, you know, kind of whimsical girls, that a lot of the time the head is quite wide. It's not the kind of usual shape that you would draw for a head. So I'm trying to make that wider than usual and also just adding in a very simple body shape. So just really blocking it in with the white at the moment. Now the white does two things. Is One, it just starts to cover up some of those deep colours underneath. And two, it just gives me that very rough shape to start to work with. So I'm now taking this uh, ink tense, but it's just the outliner. So it's, it's more kind of a normal pencil colour, but it still does blend out like normal ink tents does if you apply water. So you can see me here just getting that basic shape in and I decide at this point that I probably want to put arms on. Now the other thing about the kind of whimsical girls is that often the eyes will be quite far apart. 
and I think that just gives that kind of cute look. So I put in a little dot or little dots for the eyes and a little dot for the nose and I'm just kind of looking now at the hair. Change the shape of the eyes just a little bit and then I'm thinking about adding a mouth. Now I don't want her to look unhappy so I add a couple of little dimples in just as if she was kind of smiling, just a little sweet smile. So I've got my basic shape in now and at this point I think oh I think I want her to be holding something so I start to just draw in very roughly a kind of flower in a flower pot. So just putting that in as a kind of placeholder at the moment to remind myself that I want her to be holding that and, and, and that's what I had in my mind at that stage. So I'm now taking this bleached sand colour and just still using my finger going to put that over the face. Now you see there is a little bit of smudging with the outliner but that's okay because I know that I'm going to be adding more paint and that will be covered up and actually I don't mind if there's bits of smudginess in this or if there's still pencil lines showing through afterwards. That's the kind of look and style that I'm going for. So I also used that same colour just to start to go over her kind of dress thing because again it's just about starting to build on top of the colours that are below so to bring her kind of forward a bit. So making sure that I give it a good dry there before I go on to work with the next layer. So I've taken out some Neo Colour 2s that I have and also some gelatos. I'm just taking this peach colour and you'll see me going back to this quite a bit. So just starting to look at using that as a kind of cheek colour and then I think well actually I'll just add a bit more of that colour for the rest of the face perhaps just where the, the kind of shade might be on the face. Then taking this ochre and going right into the kind of hairline and around edges again just thinking about where those darker areas would be because I think that's one of the things about doing these sort of girls although they're kind of simplified in a way and they are a kind of naive type drawing I don't think I, I, I think what you need to do is to still think about the kind of basics of light and shade so that they don't just become flat on the page and I think it just helps again bring them to the fore and bring them to life in a certain way so adding in colour to the hair, keeping this very kind of rough at this stage, I'm not looking for this to be a perfectly finished piece of hair at this point and in fact I want to keep it that kind of way all the way through. Just adding a bit more colour again just for interest and again just blending that out with a little bit of water. Not blending it in fully though, I want that kind of distinction between the two. And you'll see me go back and forward with the face several times until I, I get it to the point that I want it to. So now taking this turquoise and I decide to add a bit of that colour to the dress. Now the funny thing is when I sat down to do this today, when I saw the colour of the, the kind of background papers that I was using, I was thinking that this would end up more of a kind of fall coloured piece in a sense, you know, with maybe oranges and reds. But it took me in a different direction and I'm glad that it did. I just went kind of with it as I laid each colour down something else would, would come to mind to do and I just followed along that path. So you'll see me more or less with each layer just drying it off and again just marking in the features a little bit just so that I, I don't lose them. So 
So I'm now going back to the white paint at this stage and just using that to add some light to it. Now I think my paintbrush still does have a bit of the Neo 2 colour on it but that's absolutely fine because it gives me, in a sense, a kind of light skin tone. Now the thing with, with faces, thing with any piece of art really, for me again, I, I will always stress for me, it's not necessarily the case for everyone, is that I can be working on this and you know I, I can't say to you this is when something is done. One just feels it oneself, you know, get to the point where you say that's it, I've done all I think I need to do with this, I am happy with where it's at. So now taking this blue, I think it's spa blue, I've taken it a little bit too much, so just using my finger to scoop some back into the bottle. And I just keep working that. It's starting to give a more solid colour at this point, whereas before uh, those things kind of peeking through. But I keep spreading it out so it's not too thick. But I, I like this colour and I actually start to see something else in my whimsical girl here. And that's why I've taken this white Neo 2 colour and just very roughly starting to mark something in. Perhaps not clear at this point but hopefully it will become clear. So I've taken that outline pencil again and just starting to do a little bit more detail on this and I started to envisage her holding a dove. So yes it changed from a flower to a dove. So at this point I want to start to take away the kind of flatness from her dress or as I'm starting to see it it's more a kind of robe. So just adding in some kind of darker shades of, of blue there just to give the effect of where the kind of shade is on it. And again this is something that I will work away at for a while and in a sense this is why I've put it on to, to double speed because I, you know I, I worked away quite slowly at this, I was enjoying it, it was fun to do and uh, but it took a, quite a while. Not in the grand scheme of things did it take a while but in terms of then showing it to you it was quite a long video. So just adding different blues with my Neo Colour 2s. This is the first time I've used my Neo Colour 2s in an absolute age. I hadn't used them for a while and I think now that I've got them out again I will probably use them more. So you see under her chin there just adding a little bit of the, the dark blue as well where, it, where her, her face, her chin would cast a bit of a shadow on her robe. So just having a think there about what next and I decide, decide at this point that I want to start to change the background up a bit. So just taking that, I think that's actually a turquoise Neo Colour 2, so just adding a bit of that and rather than using water to kind of blend it out a bit, I'm just using some white paint on my finger. So that just allows me to blend that out and blend the white and that turquoise blue colour together at the same point. By this stage I was starting to feel that I wanted the background a bit more muted, I still wanted some colour in it, I still wanted some things to peek through from the background but I didn't want it to be quite as, as vibrant and colourful as it was. But you'll see at the end that uh, there are still little bits and pieces that you can see right through it. So again just using my outliner just to make sure that I don't lose those lines. I 
And this is something that could be done just with a normal pencil. I just had this to hand. And I start to think about a little kind of ruffle round the neck of her robe. And by this point, she is starting to turn into an angel. So I am adding angel wings. Now again, you know, I would say that that's not what I set out to do. It's just this piece took me in that direction. With everything I did, something else would spring to mind. So that's often the case with the things that I do. I might sit down having a rough idea of something in mind, but, you know, never quite know how it's going to turn out. So today I sat down to do a kind of whimsical, naive looking girl and she's turned out to be an angel. So I've now got this paintbrush that I'm dipping right into my pot here so it ends up with a lot of paint going up the, the kind of handle. But what I'm trying to do is to use that brush just to create kind of feathers. So I'm not going to draw in individual feathers or paint in individual feathers. I'm just using the end of the brush just to give it a feather-like effect. And the other thing this does is to add again that kind of texture. I'm turning my journal around just so that I get, can get the paintbrush going in the kind of direction that I want to create the feathers. Not wasting any paint there, so pulling it from the, the kind of shaft of the brush and then just putting it back onto the the brush itself to use it up. And this needs quite a good dry at this stage because obviously the paint is quite thick on the wings. And you know, kind of, as I'm drying it, I am thinking to myself, what next? Where next? Do I need to work more on her face, more on her robe, more on the, the dove that's now in her hands? So I now go back to my ink tents and this is antique white and I just start to add a little bit of that to the dove. Now sometimes the problem with white, be it the ink tens or be it the neo colour too, is when you're doing it on top of other colours, you do sometimes pick up a little bit of that colour. Depends really on the, the products that are underneath. So I also added a bit of that to her face and again just using a bit of water just to blend it out. And you can see, especially on the dove there, how it does kind of blend out. Wanting to add a little bit of colour underneath there, just to show that that's her hands. So a bit of that new colour too, and also a bit of the gelato. So now taking the sea blue and again going back to a robe, just adding in colour to show where the shade is on the robe. Adding in a few lines just to show that there could be kind of fold lines in a robe. And again just blending those out to get the kind of effect that I'm looking for. Back to the cheeks and just using my finger there to blend them out. And the thing about these faces is that, although they're not realistic, it is, in a sense, good to give them 
some of the kind of characteristics that you would recognise in a face. So a little bit of shadow there under her eyes, under her lip and under her nose. Trying the white ink tense there, but it wasn't really going on terribly well, so just using the white Neo Colour too. And again, just using a little bit of water just to kind of blend that. And as I'm doing there, that's still a little bit wet, so I'm just using the Neo Colour 2 on top of it, because that's another way to use it. Now feeling that I want to add a bit more of the white to the robe. And just doing this in kind of downward lines. I think this just helps give dimension to the robe, it also shows where there might be some light hitting it and again just gives that sense of there being kind of some folds in the material. So I'm now taking my ink black ink tens and I'm just going to kind of outline the character. Now I decide here that the pencil was too blunt so I did give it a sharpen. I wanted these lines quite fine, although I do go on to, to blend them out a bit. Doing them as kind of sketchy lines rather than as, as straight lines. And trying to get just a little bit more shape in the hands here. Just to show that she's kind of cradling the dove in her hands little eye on the dove just to kind of bring it to life. Now round the wings and again making it very sketchy just to give the sense of the feathers and the, the kind of unevenness of them. And now just starting to pull that colour out a bit, pull the black out a bit. I would sometimes do that kind of outlining with a black pen, but today I felt that I wanted it not as, as kind of hard a line. So that's where the ink tends, a bit like the Stabilo All, because you can kind of blend it out, you can move it about a bit, it gives more of the, the kind of effect I was looking for today. And all this does is to help the figure stand out against the background. Adding in a little bit more there because I want to show just a little bit of shadow on the wings. So just where the wings are closest to her body, just showing that little bit of grey on the white feathers. A bit more white on the nose and the forehead and again a bit more on the dove. And just using white on white to blend that out. Did I need to use both the whites there? Who knows, I just did. And I think it certainly allows the dove to stand out that bit more. I'm just trying to give a sense of its little tail feathers. A 
adding a bit more colour to the hands there and again just using the little bit of white that was still left on my brush just to blend the gelato in. And a bit more on the cheeks. And this is kind of the way that I'll often work. I'll work back and forward between the face and other bits, you know, and never quite knowing when I'll be done until I get to the point where I think that's it. But still got a little bit to go now. So taking that white Neo Colour 2 again, and what I'm doing here is just to do a kind of up and down motion and I think I'm just trying to create a kind of sense of the angel kind of glowing, shining, giving off this white light. And again just using a bit of water to help create the effect by blending the new colour too out. So getting close to the end, I do want to put a kind of title on this. I decide again that I don't want to use a kind of hard pen. So I use a mix of the Ink Tense and the Neo Colour 2s. So you'll see that in just a moment. And I just decide to call it Peace Angel. So if you are in the Art and Soul Studio Facebook group, Diana and I would love to see what you create for the prompt Whimsical. If you're not in that group and would like to become a member, then please do come along and join us. And I will put the link to the Art and Soul Studio Facebook group in the description box below. And if you're not a member and don't want to be, then by all means, still feel free to do something for Whimsical if you've enjoyed this. So I had kind of roughly blocked in my words to begin with, then went over them with an ink tense, and now going to use this Neo Colour 2. As I say, I didn't want to use a kind of hard pen that gave a kind of hard effect. I still wanted this to be quite soft in the way that the rest of the, the page is quite soft. And I just thought this would be the easiest way to, to create that kind of effect. So I'm going to use a little bit of water just to, to blend that out. And it just helps soften it that bit further. I also felt that blue went well with the colours in the, the overall piece. Whereas I would quite often use black, the blue just felt more appropriate on this occasion. And just again taking that new colour too, and I'm just going to do a very rough border. Just putting that round and then I'll take my paintbrush with a bit of paint, uh, sorry, with a bit of water and just smooth out that line a little bit. Not looking for it to be a perfectly straight line or anything, just to kind of frame the rest of the picture. I then give that a good dry and my piece is complete. So that's how I created my whimsical girl that has turned into a peace angel. So I do hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, uh, I'd love if you could give me the thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, I would love if you would subscribe. So thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.